So I have renegotiated our contract with TNT and TBS, and we have made a great agreement. And uh, I'm very excited about it. In 2020, first of all, we're launching a third hour of, of wrestling that I've talked about a lot. It'll be Friday nights at 10 p.m. Uh, it will be in addition to Dynamite on Wednesdays, 8 to 10. So we're launching a, third, a show called Rampage. I'm really excited about it, and I wanted to do it for a long time, and it was part of our original extension over a year ago. So we're doing another show Friday nights, 10 p.m., called Rampage, and we'll continue doing Dynamite Wednesdays, 8 to 10. So very excited about Rampage at 10 on Friday nights. And actually, uh, in 2022, uh, and this is a great deal that, that they put together and uh, some very, very fair, uh, very, very fair financial considerations for us in this, we will be moving to TBS with both shows in 2022. Dynamite and Rampage in 2022 will go to wow. TBS. But we will not be leaving TNT because we're adding another great thing for the wrestling fans quarterly. And I'm not sure what night they'll be on, but, you know, in the past there have been great super card specials for wrestling fans like Clash of the Champions or Saturday Night's Main Event, the Main Event, the Battle of the Belts. We're going to have our own super card series and we're going to have quarterly super cards still on TNT, which is another part of this great deal uh, that we worked out with Warner Media. So it's huge news with another show coming to Friday nights, 10 p.m. Uh, it's a great time for wrestling fans. Friday night, there's a lot of people watching wrestling. Congratulations, Tony. You're, you're doing it, man. Okay, I'm not going to play the whole clip, but that is Tony Khan on Busted Open with Mark Henry and his partner talking about the new deal of Warner Media, which, again, this company just did a new deal at the beginning of 2020 that pretty much made them profitable right then and there. That was going to be going... Now, as far as I know, and it might be in this clip, may not be, that no, they didn't extend the dates of the, the years of, TN, of the partnership. I've been looking all day, haven't seen anything about if there's any new, new years, just that they're going from TNT to TBS, basically because Wednesday nights are going to be hockey nights for majority of the year. So, yeah, that's good on them. AEW Rampage. I'm hoping when they go to TVS, it does not stay on Fridays because, my goodness, next week is going to be a challenge because next week, due to the NBA playoffs, and this is another reason why moving to TBS is the best thing for them, is the simple fact is next Friday at 10 p.m., they're not going head-to-head -to, -head to SmackDown, which would fucking suck. So it's SmackDown. And then you lead into AEW on TNT, which next next weekend is the go-home show. Is the go-home week because you have AEW on Friday. Those in Jacksonville have a fan fest on Saturday, which if you remember back when Double or Nothing 2020 was originally announced, they were going to go all out. They were going to have a fan fest. They were going to have all these cool events and stuff going around Double or Nothing before and after. And unfortunately, it just didn't happen because of the scandemic that we're, we're dealing with. And this, um, this is going to be good because I don't know how this works, but apparently T A T B S is in more homes than TNT. It's last year it did a better rating overall than TNT. So, and it also is a historical significance too because if anybody remembers that TNT T B S used to be the home of professional wrestling. For Georgia Championship Wrestling and WCW before Monday Night Show became a thing. So, anybody's like, why are they going to TBS? Well, hockey and the NBA, I don't care how the ratings for hockey and the NBA, how up or down they're going. Because political bullshit, mostly with the NBA. they Their contracts are going to have a higher priority, priority than wrestling will ever have. It's sad, but it's true. So, that is going to be the news. That is the news that came out today. And TNT is going to have... So, another thing. Quarterly special events. So, you have the four pay-per-views pay quarterly. You have Double or Nothing, Revolution, All Out, and Full Gear. So, I'd say... Hmm. 
I'd say they're going to have the pay-per-view. They'll have a week, a month, a week in between, and then the quarterlies or something like that. But there's going to be, instead of four pay-per-views, there's going to be four pay-per-views and four special events. So we're going to have four, eight big shows in AEW. Had Blood and Guts next year, which I'm sure there'll be a Blood and Guts next year, will either A, be on a pay-per-view, or B, be its own special event, like a Clash of the Champions, like all these other show, other things that they have for AEW. So that is going to be interesting to see what happens. And in my opinion, it's kind of needed because I like the fact that we only have four pay-per-views a year. Those pay-per-views feel more special than, you know, WWE where they just give us the same rematches over and over and over again. AEW has the time to breathe. But a lot of the times, it just feels like, especially... Full gear to Revolution. It just feels like there's way too much time between Revolution and Full Gear. I mean, Full um, Full Gear and Revolution. I don't know. It just seems like that one, especially, is where it just feels like it drags, and they got to do everything they can to get people excited and for the time between those two pay per views. Now, if you feel that way for all these other pay per views, that's going to be changed starting in 2022. They didn't say a date. For 2022, when Rampage and the Wednesday Night Show are going to be going. But I'm sure it's going to be, honestly, since hockey is going to be coming back in the fall, why don't they just move to T- TBS in the fall? So I, I predict probably the 5th of January and the 7th, if they want to keep it on Fridays. So the 5th and 7th of January 2022 will probably be when they move to to um tbs just great so that's going to be interesting to see what happens there we now have to talk about tonight's show which had not one but two title matches as the varsity blondes get a tag team title opportunity from the young bucks being the number one contenders whereas red velvet also takes on serena deeb it's serena deeb's first match back defending the nwa women's world championship now my question is why is Red Velvet getting a title shot when the NWA, in their very first pay-per-view, back the back on the attack they did, what was it, last month? They held a women's number one contenders match between Camille and um, Thunder Rosa, which Camille won. Why don't, unless this match already happened and I missed it, why not give Camille her title shot Live here tonight instead of Red Velvet, who, honestly, in my opinion, is at least two years away from being ready to hold a championship. There was no way she was winning tonight. Same thing with the Blondes. It, it's like, predictable can be good sometimes if you know that it's going to be fucking predictable. And it makes sense. Not like, oh, well, this is going to happen because we're going to have a mat. We're going to have a pay-per-view in a month that they're going to do the same match over and over. So we started the match. We started the show off with Christian Cage versus Matt Seidel. This match happened because last week Christian Cage was in on an interview. He was preparing to ha- um, say he has an open contract, and he's going to be waiting in the ring for somebody in somebody on Team Taz to sign that contract. Matt Seidel came up and said, "You're not going to be facing someone from Team Taz. You're going to be facing me." So we get this match. It was a pretty decent match here. Matt Seidel, Christian Cage. Christian, you know, still getting the bumps back, like getting back into the thing, being gone for seven years. It's not going to be something that you knock all the rest off out with one, maybe two matches, which he's only, this is only his third match. He went up against Kaz. He went up against Powerhouse Hobbs. And here tonight, he went up against Matt Seidel. He was working his, over his back during, towards the end of the match. Seidel able to fight, fire back with a couple of kicks. Heads up to the top rope, but Christian catches him. Christian looks for a superplex, but Seidel knocks him back. Lands a Meteor, cover two. Christian looks for a spear. Seidel with a reverse into a close three count. Christian's able to work out of a submission and drops Seidel with a big strike. Seidel gets up, hits a rising knee, ankle pick, looking for a standing twisting centaur. But Christian gets the knees up, hits the kill switch. One, two, three. Christian Cage is your winner. After the match, he gets... He picks, he picks Matt Seidel up. They hug. Christian Seidel gives him a bow. Taz, who was on commentary for this match because he still has a beef with Christian Cage after what he calls disrespectful words from Christian. And 
And Christian's inviting him to the ring, but out comes Ricky Starks, who is in his own very own suit. Which, if you don't know, Ricky Starks will not be wrestling for at least the next three months because of that match he had with Hangman Adam Page with that, um, uh, what was it, that that German suplex, that released German suplex that landed him with a um, landed him on his head. Yeah, he's got a f- neck fracture. He's not going to be wrestling for a while. It could have been worse. It really could have been worse. And thankfully for him, he's going to be fine. It's just like, it wasn't a broken neck. It was just a... Um, it was just a, um, fracture, so, yeah, no surgery is needed, he just needs to rest, relax, be on commentary on Dark, probably for the foreseeable future, and causing distractions for his boys in the show. So, they're beating up these two when Hangman Adam Page, which just was funny, Hangman Adam Page comes out, he's got his drink. Doing what he did before the pandemic, scandemic, handed it to Ricky Starks, went into the ring, he starts fighting them off. Unfortunately, Hook with the hook to the back of the leg, as his father said, and they beat the hell out of Paige. Buckshot Larry was missed. Joe Claw, no. Hangman hooks the hook, jumps in with the chop block from behind. Brian Cage power bombs him, and they all celebrate. My question is where was the Dark Order? I think they're getting tired of Hangman out of Paige. They'd spent all that time recruiting Hangman Adam Page, and they just left him out there in a lurch. I'm sure it'll be a skit on um, being the elite coming Monday. So, we heard from the Varsity Blondes, and they have a manager. If you haven't watched over the last two weeks on Dark or Dark Elevation, they have a new manager in Julia Hart, who, as much as I can tell, is not a member of the Hart family at all. I can't, like, somebody can correct that to me. I've never seen it before. But the day before she made her debut on Dark Elevation, she was in, she was a member of the Cody Rhodes Nightmare Factory Showcase. She had a match. And then one night later, she was on Dark, the next, Dark Elevation, the next night she was on Dark. And then the week after that, she's the manager of the, she's the valet of the Varsity Blondes. And, of course, she's blonde, too. She is a two-time national champion. Here is the Varsity Blondes hyping up their paper, their match later in the night. It's funny that the Young Bucks would mention my late father, Brian Pillman, because most would be led to believe that that's what got me into the professional wrestling business. I'm here to tell you that that could not be further from the truth. That man is the reason I stayed away from pro wrestling for so long. Because growing up, all I ever knew was the dark side of the ring until I met the Young Bucks. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Nice. I'm, I'm sure the vice producers of Dark Side of the Ring got a little, got happy about that with the shout out. Because if you didn't know, two weeks ago, they had the second part of the Brian Pillman, the Brian Pillman Dark Side of the Ring. If you didn't watch the first part, the first part was put on YouTube and the second part was on Vice's channel. And that he, Brian Pillman Jr. was all over that. A couple of good guys, a couple of family men that gave me hope. They showed me that this could be done the right way. They showed me that I could succeed and fulfill my destiny. The Young Bucks are why we're here today. In September of 2018, I was at a local show, and I was asked to run the Young Bucks merchandise table. And I was overcome with joy. I was so happy just to be around those guys and hang out with them and just pick their brain. Fast forward a few years later, I come to AEW and I realize they're not the same Young Bucks I met back in 2018. What these boys need is a reality check. And that reality check is going to come in the form of the Varsity Blondes winning the AEW Tag Team Championships. And it's such a shame, isn't it? It's a shame that you guys had to go back to your old ways, the same old song and dance, the Bucks. Well, we've heard that story before. We've seen that movie. But the story you haven't heard is the story of Brian Pillman Jr., Griff Garrison, and the former national champion, Julia Hart, the Varsity Blondes, and we will not stop until we achieve our destiny and become the AEW Tag Team Champions. Awesome promo by both guys. And but Julia, Julia Hart does point up the two fingers like two time. So, first off, it was great that they added her to this gimmick because, honestly, in my opinion, it felt like they were missing something. And, lo and behold, it was a cheerleader for them, Julia Hart. So, it's great to see that they added that, and it's going to be the main event later on tonight. But, great promo. These guys, I hope, are a tag team for the foreseeable future. 
Even not winning tonight, which yes, they did not win because there's a bigger match happening at Double or Nothing where that the Young Bucks need to be tag team champions going into. But between now and next year, I would not be shocked if the Varsity Blondes are, have a tag team title reign down the line. Maybe All Out, maybe uh, Full Gear, maybe Revolution next year, or hell, even maybe Double or Nothing in 2022. That I could see. Or maybe one of the quarterly shows. Maybe they do win on one of the quarterly shows. I can see it happening. It's just not their time. They're not there yet. So, let me see if I can get this one too. The Kingston and them cut a promo. And I can't do it justice. I just got to find it here. Thank you to whoever posts these things up. Because John Moxley and Eddie Kingston, you can't, you can't duplicate them. We gotta be making some kind of a dent in this tag team division. You can see us on Dark, on L. Number four in the tag team rankings going into this match tonight. Vacation, you see us tonight against these boys, the acclaimed. They're supposed to be good. Are they any good? Rappers. One's a rapper. The rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One's a rapper, the other one's the rapper's friend. The rappers. Yeah, rappers. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, what we're gonna do with the acclaimed tonight is what we've done to every other team we've got in a ring with so far. Are we, invite, are we inviting them to a super kick party? Dog, is that what I don't mean? get the super kick part because I don't throw we, super kicks. No, you don't throw super kicks. I do definitely, we, I do not. Do we kick. have to throw super kicks so, to go to said party? So that's not what this is. No, no, no. This is not a super Look, kick. Look, my man we TK, he's all about the analy analytics. He's a numbers analytics. guy. Analytics. Analytics. He's a numbers guy. We got to beef up that record. I don't Let's just know. go out there and beat the bricks off these boys. Oh, I like that. They actually cut out Eddie Kingston's portion, which, god damn you guys, come on. But yeah, that was your next match. Which, you know... So, we get another version of, the, of Wild Thing for Moxley and Eddie Kingston. They came out to the Major League version of... The, the film Major League version of Wild Thing, which got me to thinking, because on Dark and Dark Elevation, they were using Moxley's normal tag theme for tag team matches... When they had one tag team match, I think it was on Elevation and Dark, they went singles matches, but you see. So, um, what if during this whole entire run with them, they come out to different versions of Wild Thing every single time? It's not just one version. I think that'd be pretty, pretty funny. Eddie, um, of course, Max Caster comes out, he raps, he says, um, why does Eddie dress like it's so four? He looks like a box of Newports. He says to Mox that his wife hit him up in his DM for some, for, in his DMs for some oral sessions. Brian replies, what? She wants us to be on the podcast. Bowens gets in the ring, starts his AEW acclaim has arrived thing, but Moxley just wrecks this motherfucker so hard and beats him up, throws him outside into the barricade. And I'm like, Bowens didn't even, it wasn't even the one to trash at his, at Moxley's wife. It was Max Caster, so Bowens got beat up by association. I thought that was pretty funny. Renee actually put a tweet out here. She said she had the Conor McGregor, who the fuck is that guy, uh, meme, and said, let's get, you blue, let's get you a blue check mark and some W's, and we'll look for booking you in the fall. Thanks for the plug, Platinum Max. Here, brand new episodes this Thursday, every Tuesday and Thursday. So, yeah, I had to get that one in there. So, basically, this was Moxley and Kenny Kingston getting, just beating the hell out of these guys. Yes, they got some work in, and Moxley, like, Moxley and Eddie Kingston had no shot of losing this match. Yes, the Acclaim got some moves in. Moxley goes to the top, but Bowens hits, hits him. Caster climbs up and hits a second rope suplex. Bowens up to the top, crossbody suplex combo cover. Kingston breaks it up. Kingston on the floor, throws Caster into the barricade, which... Yeah, that barricade is not the WWE barricade where it's soft as a pillow. This shit is hard steel. Moxley looks for the um, Death Knight, but no, he but he's able to lock in the sleeper. Kingston tags in. They try for the finish, but Caster yanks Moxley out to the floor. That, Kingston is down, and the ref checks him. Caster tosses Bowens a chain. Referee sees it and stops. Of course, this is their diversion, so they could use the boom box. But, he, yeah, Caster brings the boombox in. Moxley takes it, smacks Caster because Bowens is distracting the referee still. Wheelbarrow into the Death Rider. One, two, three. And John Moxley and Eddie Kingston win. They do have that finisher with the half-and-half half suplex um, lariat combo. They call, I believe it's the Royal Crown. Good move. 
And backstage, Alex Marvez talks to Chris Jericho. Can I find that one too? That'd be hilarious. That'd be great. I know I should set these things up a lot better, but I'm going off the YouTube, the Twitter page for these things because for whatever reason, AEW stopped posting them on YouTube right after the fact. Even though they put the main event, which we'll talk about the end of that main event because that was some funny shit. Uh, let me see. I don't think I can actually get this one. So, one more time, look through here. I uh, don't think they posted it. Let me see, let me see. Uh, no? No. Good one from the blondes, good one from them. Um, That's gotta all be the, come on. Yeah, that is, that's fucking hilarious. We'll get to that in a second. No, doesn't look like they put the Jericho, like, either, like, the Jericho one, I wish they would have put up both of them. Because of uh, the full pentacle, full inner circle one on here, but they didn't. But anyway, let me see here. Where are we at? Alice Brown's ready to talk to Jericho, who's Demon Linko Marvez, wants to know if the inner circle is going to accept the pinnacle challenge. He tells, oh yeah, he only tells in the bounce because before he makes Malenko mad, which, God, Malenko looks so bad right now. It's it, He's going through all times, I believe, and I know my, 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 my grandma. So I, I know the feels on that. It's it's not a good look. But then we have our boys, the team of Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page, who, yeah. Now, they don't have Scorpio Sky's portion in this, but we'll talk about um, Ethan Page in a second. Of course, Scorpio Sky was like, when I was, when I was young, I wanted to be just like Sting, like many others. And of course, Tony Schiavone is doing the interview. He's like, that's understandable because, yeah. A lot of people. I was like, I I was uh, the little kid when Sting was when the when Crow Sting was going on at least, and yeah, Sting was the coolest fucking guy in the world. And Scorpio Sky is like, but something changed, and that was time. And time has passed him by. It's I'm not a child anymore, and it's my time, and I'm going to put you down unless you step aside. Ethan Page then has his words. I promise you, and I'm a man of my word, Darby. Oh, they don't have the full thing. I will be the nail in your coffin. Of course, he, before that, he um said that pretty much he gloated about the fact that they, that they heard Sting, and they were the reason that, they, they, they take pretty much partial credit for Darby Allen losing the TNT Championship, but they do give props to Miro, saying Miro deserved that spot. And, yeah. Of course, out comes Sting and Darby. They beat the hell out of these guys. Sting gets a Scorpion on Scorpio Sky. Isn't that kind of funny? Darby prevents Ethan Page from coming in here to stop him. I was hoping that when this was done and Scorpio Sky left, and they both left, that Ma that they would get the mat the the mics, Darby or Sting, and one of them would um, issue the challenge for double or nothing. Of course, that doesn't happen. Dark Order comes out from both tunnels to block their way, and I don't know what the Dark Order is going to be doing with these guys. I mean, they're still feuding with the Hardy family office, and yeah. So we go from there. To what is absolutely one of the best fucking things of the night, MJF and the Pinnacle. Well, though, with a um, bottle of wine, just chugging it all down. Take another. Me too. Gosh, Chris, you're, you're just so funny and witty. Has anybody ever told you that? With your third grade humor. I mean, it's so great. Ha 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 ha! The pineapple! Ha 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 ha! My jerk off friend! Ha 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 ha! Let's just douse them all in bubbly, right? God, Chris, you're so good. You're just so good. And I hope, I hope, I hope it makes you laugh. How great you are! I just hope you laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. I hope you laugh yourself silly. Because for the first time in the history of your career, Chris, you're dealing with a guy who always gets the last laugh. You uh. You think this is enjoyable for us? 
You think it's enjoyable for us to, 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 to beat you guys up every single week? No, what we should be doing as the pinnacle, as the absolute best unit in this world, we should be chasing every AEW world championship that this company has. We should be building a legacy. We should be building the foundation of what AEW is by being the pinnacle. But we can't because we have to deal with you. We have to deal with you, Chris. And it's almost embarrassing. It's almost embarrassing after 30 years, you're still making a mockery of professional wrestling. You're still making a mockery of a sport that I... And my family love. The last year, uh, the Stadium Stampede was a dog and pony show. This year, we're in control. Hey. And it's not an SNL skit. It's not a rom-com. It's nothing funny. It's going to be serious. Say. It's going to be... I want my drink. Sean. Sean. Sean got a little upset that the waiter wasn't pouring a drink for him. That should take care of it. And Tully throws him a money clip. Okay. If you decide to do Stadium Stampede, just know it will be your last match in her circle. Because when you're in the pinnacle, you're always on top. Just a great promo from MJF, as usual. Um, Dax, I think it was, gets some good time. Uh, Dax, yeah, Dax gets some um, good time too. And yes, they should be chasing titles, but they got to deal with this. That match, of course, is going to happen. We'll talk about the um, pen the inner circle's response here in a bit. But just, just great. AEW Women's Champion Kit Kari Ishida versus Rebel with the Faker Britt Baker. Oh, can't stand that woman. So, Rebel, of course, fakes her energy for the minute this match starts. And she does not having any of this shit and just starts beating her up. Rebel taunts and hits a big uh, a bit, lands a shot. She taunts her some more, but gets smacked in the face by the champ. Baker and Sheeta talk some trash as Sheeta hits the black glove on uh, for the faker. Sheeta tries a long shot, but Britt has the championship, which is side number one that I don't think she's winning next Sunday. Referee distracts. Rebel hits Sheeta at the back of the crutch, but... And then Rebel says, well, you know what? I'm just going to hit a release suplex because that's going to be enough. Only gets a two count. Sheeta hits a knee bar breaker. Not the way you usually would. Usually when you do a knee breaker, you pick them up by holding their leg and drop it on your leg. No, that did not happen because Sheeta picked this woman up and dropped her on the fucking mat. Puts her in the stretch, mu stretch muffler. She taps out. And after the match, Britt Baker, the faker, gets in, beats her up. Jumps in the ring and attacks her. Brings in the title and curb stomps her with the shittiest fucking curb stomp I have ever seen. Faker put, pulls the title up and holds it above her head. And that's sign number two telling me that she's not winning the championship. I know, mean, yes, it's, w, it's AEW, it's not WWE. But can you tell me the last time a challenger looked as strong as they're making the Faker look. And that person goes on to win the championship. Tell me. When was the last time that happened? Because what happened when John Moxley and Kenny Omega had their match? What happened before that? John Moxley what beat the hell out of Kenny Omega not once but twice, looked like the strongest person going in, ended up losing. This is the same thing. You're making her look way too strong for me to buy that she's actually going to fucking win. And that would be the biggest mistake if she actually won. Just saying. And then the second best part of the show, <coughs> last week, they had, to, they had to do an audible. Last week, they had to do an audible because of an injury to Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy got knocked in the head and fell down and was not getting back up. Especially after a kick to the face and then a massive powerbomb. That holy shit. That looked bad. So they had Don Callis distract the referee, and Kenny Omega come out and beat, uh, knock out the pack, and cause a double countout. Which they promised they would never do that, but hey, when real life happens, you have no choice but to do a WWE type move because it was totally a WWE type move. Well, last week, and I'll set this up because you're gonna listen. They show us what happened last week after the sh after that. Where Orange Cassidy was being checked on by the doctor. The best friends in. His little alien were there. When Kenny Omega, Don Callis come in. 
Yo, EVP coming through. Come on, can we clear the room, guys? Yeah. For real. Let's go, guys. We're checking on the kids. <laughs> whoa, Chris. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Chris can comes up to Kenny and just stares daggers at him. Chris, Chris, guys, Chris, come on. We're concerned. We're concerned. Time to go. Beat it. Best friends and Chris leave. Bricks. We'll look after him. Oh, hey. sorry, Brandon. Hey, you're wow. cool in my book, Doc. You can stay. Yeah, good job, Doc. Take care of the kids. Oh, jeez. Rough wow. night at the office. Do you see what happened Whoa. up there today? Do you remember? Hey, Don, pull up the footage. Yeah, I got the footage here. Did you see yeah. this? While you were there. <sighs> oh! The you saw us, eh, Don? Horrible. That's horrible. Oh. Okay, enough, oh, enough, enough, God, enough, enough. The enough. humanity of that. Okay, don't add salt to the wound. The point we're trying to get at here is, Orange... We value you in this company, and this isn't just the champion speaking. This is an EVP speaking to you right now, okay? We care about you. We need you to sell those shirts. We need you to be the mascot of AEW. Not so much as we need you as the main eventer, as the guy challenging for the belt. And so, to show that we care, yeah. our legal teams have prepared something just for a situation like this, and that's really standard. Don, if you could explain it, Orange. Well, sometimes we find ourselves in a position we have to protect the talent from themselves, yeah. from their own worst instincts. You, well, you're a warrior. You're a I've, great been wrestler. I've been there. I've been there. You want to go. Someone's got to tell you not to. So here's the deal. This is a simple legal document where you give up your right yep. to be in the main event at double or nothing because you're injured. You're For your own good. Messed up. Mm -hmm. Uh, but don't worry, because this states that you still get to have your dream match with Kenny Omega, the god of pro wrestling, down at a later the time. road. Yeah. Down the road yeah. when you're a little healthier. So if you just, you know, you can just sign this. It's pretty standard stuff. It's all boilerplate. Sign it right there, and then you can have your match later, but not at double or nothing. What are you doing? <laughs> Anyways, Cassie, not saying a word, just takes the contract and rips it slowly. The slowest I've ever seen in half. <laughs> He didn't even read it. Let's do it again. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. We get it. We, we get, get, point, it. get it. He's point. a little bit not right in the head right now, Kenny. Okay, Can you explain this to him, please? I, I've got it. Performer got it. to okay. performer or something? Ooh, orange. <laughs> Buddy pal. Okay. Um, I want to explain something to you, okay? Think about what happened to that power bomb, okay? What went wrong? Nothing. That's just a level of talent that's at the upper echelon of AEW. That's a level of talent that, that lives at the top. And what's going to happen on a pay-per-view main event if I pick you up on my shoulders and I drive you down with a one-winged angel? I'm not going to hold back. In fact, the damage that I do to you might be worse than that powerbomb could ever do. I could, I could injure you. I could end your career. Heck, I could even maybe end your life. That's the last mm -hmm. thing we want. So, Don, I know you printed out too. Yeah, we thought, you know, so get another one, same document, yep. give up your time. Like same thing. We don't want you 10 years from now not remembering your, your wife and kid's name or something. It'd be terrible. So just listen. Don't rip it up. Just hold on to that. Give it some thought. Get some sleep. Or maybe you're not supposed to do that. But, you know, rest. Have a look at that. Tomorrow, yeah. sign it. Get it back to us. Look, we care, buddy. We, we care. We do. We do. We're you got a bright a future lot. with this company. Fair a lot. Think about Ice it. Bag doc. Just just good stuff right there. That's actually, I think, one of the best things that Kenny Omega and Don Callis have done since this whole partnership on TV has happened. And just Orange Cassidy there, looking beat up, not saying a word, just taking that contract, ripping it slowly in and half. And that they're going to, I guess they're going to have the response next week, because next week is going to be the go-home show. And yeah, boy, that's going to be so much craziness to next week. So, we have the Inner Circle. Since I don't have the clip and I can't really, like, I really just want you to hear it, but I can't. Um, basically, Sammy Guevara, Ortiz, Santana's not there this week because he was sick last week. So, there's that. Well, Santana, Ortiz, well, Santana was Ortiz, Sammy Guevara, Chris Jericho, great on the mic. Hager does not need to be on the mic all the time. Just no. So, yeah. There's that. And of course, they do They do accept. They do accept, as you figured they would. And... <sighs> before we say anything else, we have... Before we get to anything better, we have more bullshit with Jade Cargill, who is the hottest free agent. The what they're doing is basically... What this is telling you is that she's not ready... 
to be wrestling on a regular basis. So, here's my question. Why is she on my fucking TV? Jay Cargill hasn't wrestled that much. Because, one, they want to have as much time as they can for the faker because they, she is the face of the women's division. Even though she hasn't been the championship champion once. Which, by the way, going back to that. If you can't help, if you can't carry a match, you have no right or no reason to be the fucking women's champion. And the faker, in every match that she's had, if it's not with somebody like a Sheeta or a Thunder Rosa or anybody else like that, she looks fucking terrible. And that's who you want to put your championship on? But that's fine right now. We'll talk about that on Friday because next, fr next Friday is going to be a double header because we have SmackDown and AEW back to back. And I'm going to be watching all four hours. Man, I'm going to have a hell of a night. But then we go into Serena Deeb versus Red Velvet for the NWA Women's World Championship. Why is this match happening? Hell if I should fucking know. Deeb, right out the gate, just starts hot as fire. It's like... I may have been gone for about three months, but I'm coming back letting you know that I'm all good. Well, you knew Red Velvet wasn't winning. I don't think... I think whoever beats Serena Deeb for the NWA Women's World Championship will be a member of the NWA. There is no reason otherwise for her to lose that championship at this time. So... I'd say Velvet did put up a hell of a, um, thing, a hell of a chance, but in the end, Dee worked on her leg all night. Worked on it because she was going to put her in the Serenity Lock and beat her. She got her in the Serenity Lock the first time, but she was able, but Velvet was able to get out. Dee with the power bomb looked like she was going to cover. No, Velvet claws her way to the bottom rope with the Serenity Lock. Dee pulls her back into the middle of the ring, tries for a figure four, but Velvet gets the roll up for a two. Velvet with a kick to the rope, hits, hits the ropes. D with a chop block that jams Velvet's knee. Serena Deeb lock, Red Velvet taps out. Serena Deeb retains the championship, no doubt about it. Backstage, Alex Marvez with Pac, who is not happy about missing out on an opportunity. He says he has his match now and there's nothing the elite can do about it. And he asks Marvez, what fool would bet against the bastard? Moving on here, we have Austin Gunn versus um, Anthony Agogo. Now... I didn't know this, but Anthony Agogo is 79% blind in his left eye. This is why he's no longer a boxer. If he didn't have the blindness, he would probably still be boxing and being in the Olympics or the later year, he'd probably be fighting in the Olympics this year. But he is wrestling, and here's the problem with being somebody with that in with that with that disability in like you need your eyes to see. He takes one bad shot to his left eye, or in that area, he goes completely blind in that area, he has to retire. You're not going to have somebody, the AEW is not going to be stupid enough to have a guy who's blind, and like completely blind, in one eye, be on the roster. It's just not going to happen. But, Austin Gunn, like, compared to his last match, um, Anthony Ogogo, Austin Gunn out with a blaze of fire. Attacking this guy, beating this guy up, hitting him and like hitting him all the chance he can. Actually working towards that left eye, trying to do some more damage to it. But then Anthony Ngogo with a gut shot picks him up again, gets another gut shot. Bryce Rensburg's gonna call the match, but um, and but Gun grabs his arms like no 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 we're not gonna do that. Ngogo pops him up, gut hits him. It looked like it was in the um. Stunt in the in the chest or something, but he got he gets him one more time. Gun is out. Referee stops the match. Anthony and Gogo wins. Not really that impressed with it so much. It's just the fact that I know they're doing what they can to make him a beast, but yeah, it is what it is. Cody jumps in the ring. A Gogo grabs the American flag, and I'm like, yeah, you might want to not. I mean, yes, the United States is in a flux right now with things, but you do not on U.S. television disrespect the American flag the way he was going to because even though I know people are being who are getting away with um, disrespecting the flag in the streets of big cities yeah that's still a federal offense and he would in AEW would see a lot of backlash he grabs the flag he throws it in but Cody grabs it referees get in the middle in between these guys Cody uh, a go go leaves all the referees come in the ring and that's that so then we have the fallout from SCU breaking up last week
hold on, get this done right. Oh, so, Miles Marvez asked Christopher Daniels about what's next for him because he did put out this cryptic tweet. Daniels doesn't say anything. He goes over, he shakes Kazarian's hand, and then um, they shake hands. They do something. He says something to him, and they don't have the promo, but yeah, he says that. He just, they shake hands, and that is that. Now, Frankie Kazarian pretty much blames Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, the Good Brothers, Brandon Cutler, everybody uh, in the Elite to what happened. So, basically, he has a goal in mind. And that is, he's going to be the Punisher. He's going to go after every single member of the Elite and take them out for the sins against his friend, his tag team partner, Christopher Daniels. Who knows what happens with Christopher Daniels? If you want to hear an impassioned promo on his future, you should watch the opening of BTE on Monday because that was fucking great. So then we get Miro and as far as you in the ring. He's hype. He's he's floating about the fact that he beat Darby Allen last week. He's the great TNT champion. People will say we want Darby. He grabs the title and says, Here's your Darby now. Promises that he will have a championship match next week. It will be against Dante Martin. And then Lance Archer comes out, they have words. And on February on May 30th, that is going to be your match. So, before we get to the main event, next Friday, Miro versus Dante Martin, TNT Championship match, Joe Janela versus Hangman Adam Page, which is, they did mention how it is a return, it is a rematch from their all-in match, almost four years ago, three years ago, something like that. Anthony Gogo and Cody Rhodes will have a weigh-in, Jade Cogo issues an open challenge, hey look, she's going to have a match against probably a nobody. Celebration of the Inner Circle's life, which tells me that what's going to happen at Double or Nothing, that doesn't sound good. Evil Uno vs. Stu and Stu Grayson vs. Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. Darby Allen and Sting vs. Cesar Bononi. I'm sorry. Darby Allen with Sting vs. Cesar Bononi with Ryan Nemeth. Celebrating the one plus year anniversary of Hikari Shida winning the AEW Women's World Championship. She will clip. She will pass the one, one year mark on Sunday. Orange Cassidy will respond to Kenny Omega's offer. And at Double or Nothing, Sting vs. Scorpio and Darby Allen vs. Scorpio Sky. And. Um. Ethan Page. And they'll have a special announcement for the buy-in match. Young Bucks vs. with Don Callis vs. the Varsity Blondes with Julia Hart. This was a really good match. It was a great showing for the Varsity Blondes. And of course, it's the Young Bucks. What do you expect? They, 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 they are still one of the best tag teams. They made these guys look good. The, the fact that Julia Hart, like... Towards the end of the match, of course, you know, the cold spray comes in. The ba um, comes in. They spray Brian Pillman the first time. They go to get, like, doesn't, it doesn't end there. They go to spray him the second time, but Julia Hart was able to let the referee know, look, that's not, no, no, get that out of here. So they get that, they get another thing of cold spray, but instead of spraying dart them, they spray Julia Hart. Which, ah, uh, poor, poor Julia, it sucks, but that sucks. So... Let's see here. Matt, he's, um, Garrison runs in and kicks Matt, but he's a super kick from Nick. Another cold spray thrown in, but Julia yells at the referee to get it out of here. As I said, Matt sprays Julia in the face. She screams and falls to the ground. Matt drops Pillman and applies the sharpshooter. Matt gets rid of Garrison. Nick gets rid of Garrison, hits a face buster on Pillman, and Pillman has to tap out to the pain. So the Bucks get the win. That was obvious. Then, after the match... They're celebrating, they're happy and everything. Callis and Cutler bail as the ring as John Moxley and Eddie Kingston show up. They beat the living hell out of the Young Bucks. And then, after they, because they both put sleepers on these guys and knocked them out. Matt and Moxley and Kingston steal their Dior's. The fake Dior's, but whatever. And it's kind of funny because Kingston, a master at this shit, had his buck. Uh, shoes off immediately, and took his socks and put them in his uh, in his um pants, his uh, his um pockets. Moxley, as we're going to replay, uh, uh, announcing the match that's going to happen at Double or Nothing. Moxley's over there, just slowly taking his sweet ass time to get his Bucks shoes off. So at Double or Nothing, it will be John Moxley and Eddie Kingston versus the Young Bucks for the AEW 
World Tag Team Championship. That is, I'm going to say it this week, I'm going to say it on Friday too. That is when this show, that is when the tag team titles change hands. Plain and simple. Oh yeah, also they did show off everybody who's going to be minus the one that matters the most. The Battle Royal, the Casino Battle Royal. Christian Cage, Matt Seidel, Powerhouse Hobbs, Evil Uno, Colt Cabana, Preston Vance, Jungle Boy, Matt Hardy, Mark Quinn, Isaiah Cassidy, Pentel Zero Miedo, The Blade, Griff Garrison, Brian Pillman, Max Caster, Anthony Bones, QT Marshall, Lee Johnson, Dustin Rhodes, and Nick Camarato. That is 20 because 5 pursuit, but we don't know the wild card. Put in the comments who you think it's going to be. And my one thought is Andrade. It's the only one that I can think of because you're not going to... It would be a letdown if anybody but an outside wrestler comes in and hits and becomes the wild card. Doesn't mean they're going to win. I mean, the first year they did it, of course, Hangman Adam Page was the wild card because they were just starting out. But, yeah, that is going to be... Very interesting. So, yeah. Double or nothing is going to be one hell of the, of the shot. So, yeah. And Double or nothing is going to be great. Hopefully, it's like the best show of the year. We have the stadium stampede, which, of course, will probably be filmed before the, before the live show happens. It's probably going to be, since they're not going to be here on Wednesday night next week, I'm pretty sure they're going to film the Stadium Stampede that night. Of course, everyone knows Chris Jericho is injured. He is out four to six weeks for regular competition. I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Double or nothing's going to happen next week. Next week... It's pretty much simple. Monday Night Raw on Monday review, SmackDown and AEW and a double review on Friday. If they do, if they happen to do anything for the if, if the um, Banfest is aired anywhere and I can get a hold of watching it, I'll give my thoughts on things that they do anything because there's supposed to be matches there. But of course, then the pay per view on Saturday. I mean, on Sunday. So, very big, week, big, very big week coming up next week. I cannot wait to see what happens. Next week is going to be fucking huge. And it's going to be the biggest week in professional wrestling in 2021 thus far. But, that is all I got for you. Hit that subscribe button. Comment down below. Like or dislike this video. Hit, um... Find me on Mines at the Franz Club. Find me on Twitch.tv slash The Club. And find me on Instagram at The Franz Club. And I will see you guys on... Friday for another episode of SmackDown. Until then, my name is Franz, and I'll see you guys later.